What's good, family? It's your man, Daryl the second. I got some sleep as opposed to last night. Um, when I was doing the videos, I was making it clear I was tired and I needed to go to bed. I did. So I wanted to address, I meant to add something to the last video, but I was so tired I forgot to do it. But before I do it here, you already know what we do. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just pray that this word would hit home with the people. I pray that you would uh, sanctify and cleanse me, Father, if anything not of you, anything that would contaminate me, my eye gates, my ear gates, um, anything in my character not like you, I pray you would cleanse me, sanctify me, purify me, and I pray, Lord, that your truth would come out um, in purity um, and that you would be heard and felt in these videos. In Jesus' name, I pray, and I repent of anything not of you in my life, sins unknown and sins known. Amen. All right, y'all. The last video I mentioned, I had started a new gym. Um, I hadn't been there in a while, so I'll, I'll, re I'll recap. I uh, canceled my previous membership at the other gym because I just wasn't making time to go, and it was not it was far from where I live. <clears throat> and so then I signed up to another gym, and the other gym I signed up to um, was one I used to go to years ago. Um, and so I went to the first location, which is a little bit away from me, but not really far. Um, but when I got there and I got in that um, um, parking lot i just felt the vibe and it was just a, it's like a spirit honestly and i just like i don't even know if i should be here and i prayed about it i said father you know i have goals i said but if this is not the location for me please let me know i went inside uh waited in line uh the dude that was an employee couldn't help me so he got another employee to help me and then i had to run to the restroom so i went to the restroom and when i got in the restroom it was just disgusting it was vile it was filthy I mean, the smell of just urine everywhere, urine by the sinks. It was gross. And I was just like, this is exactly how it was like when I last was at this gym like 10 years ago. I'm like, are they still not taking care of business? This is disgusting. And everybody was just working out like and just walking around like it was the norm. And I was just like, how can they function in this nasty atmosphere? And so that was my answer to leave. And even as I was leaving, the individual who had um, been assigned to help me, he wasn't nowhere to be found. So I was like, well, praise God. I ain't got to deal with no um, having to new maneuver past pressure sales, all that stuff. I just got to walk out. But what the lesson I got from that was be ye set apart, be ye holy for I'm holy. That's the illustration I got from that. I got broad is the road that leads to destruction. Narrow is the way that leads to salvation. How few are those who find it? Let me finish my story so you understand where I'm going with this. So I went to another affiliate of this gym because this is a very big, big known gym, but it has large structures as well as small structures, um, different variations of memberships with these gyms. So I went to the smaller one. And when I went to the smaller one, um, I had been there before. I got there. I paid the membership. Um, the brother there um, gave me a great deal. Not only that, but the atmosphere was better. Um, I haven't been to the bathrooms, but I think I'm pretty sure they're probably better. But just it was cleaner overall. The environment, environment was different. The vibe was different. And I was just like, thank you, Father. And so it was much smaller, though. And it reminded me in the Bible about a remnant, how God has a remnant of those who will serve him. And how that scripture with Jesus says, broad is the road that leads to destruction. And narrow is the way that leads to salvation. And how few are those who find it? And so I wanted to say not everything is for everybody. You might be going to pursue something that's very popular. And a lot of people are on that road. But that might not be where God is calling you. God may be saying this looks popular and appeasing to the eye, but I got something over here hidden for you. And so I just want to say, be mindful of that. Be aware and be uh, sensitive to what God's leading is and follow his lead. Seek him. The Bible refers to him as the good shepherd. Psalm 23 says he is the shepherd. He is our shepherd. We shall not want. He will guide us in the direction we are to go. And if you incline your ear to him, he will show you in some way, shape, or form an answer to your prayer. Sometimes he'll talk to you. You hear him. Sometimes he'll talk to your spirit. Sometimes he'll talk to, you, to your thoughts, to your mind. Some, he'll definitely talk to your word. Sometimes he'll talk to people. All I'm saying is when you bring him into the situation, he will make himself known to you in some way, shape, or form. And don't base your, uh, what am I trying to say? Popularity is often a distraction. We think that's the route to go because so many people are doing it. But I encourage you, it's okay to be different and set apart because there's some atmospheres God doesn't want you to be associated with. For this instance, it was just gross. There's no way I could work out in an environment and it smelled and looked like that. I was like, I can't do it. And God knew that and he blessed me to go somewhere else. I didn't compromise. I didn't waver. I didn't succumb to pressure. I trusted him. He showed me my move. He showed me um, what it was and I made a move. And it reminds me of the movie, The Matrix, how when Keanu Reeves was unplugged from The Matrix, they were in the car and he said, ew. And Lawrence Fishburne said, what? He goes, I used to eat that. Sometimes we are accustomed to doing certain things and we don't realize how detrimental it is to us until we're unplugged and we look back and we're like, oh, I used to do that. And so I got that illustration because when I was in there, everybody at the gym was just doing their thing like it was nothing. I'm like, y'all don't. Y'all don't, they're walking around the locker room like it was nothing. I'm like, y'all don't smell this crap? Y'all don't, 
I'm like, this is disgusting. Like, there's a sign talking about these are the hours of cleaning. I'm like, the employee must have missed them hours because this is, I went to the sink to wash my hands and it, by the sink, it smelled like piss. And I was like, this is horrible. Man, I went and sanitized my shoes just in case I stepped in some. I'm just telling you, that's how gross it was, yo. It was just, it was just bad. And some folks are trifling. And so there are some environments God don't want you to inhabit. And you don't have to force yourself to adhere to it. If God is making a way out, go. Let him lead you where you're supposed to be. You don't have to be the goat, be the sheep, and follow his lead. So anyway, that's all I wanted to say. If there's anybody watching, you don't have a personal relationship with God the Father, the only way you can have one is through his son, Jesus Christ. This comes through a confession of faith, a belief in your heart, that Jesus is Lord, that he died on the cross for your sins, and that God the Father raised him back from the dead. He is the Son of God, and if you believe that, if you ask him to come in your heart, be your Lord and Savior, he'll do that. The Spirit of God will come in your heart. You will be adopted, and your name will be written in the book of life. And it's important to get in a Bible-based church so you can continue to grow. The reason why Jesus is important is because when you die, you're going to heaven or you're going to hell. You're going to life or death. Jesus is life. No, life without Jesus is death. And he doesn't want that for you. So if you're interested in what I'm saying, just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe God the Father raised you back from the dead. And I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. You are the son of God. Amen. Now, I said a couple extra things. That's all biblical, though. But I wanted to allude to the fact that when he died, it was for your sins and for my sins. He was the ultimate sacrifice, the atonement for mankind's uh, shortcomings. And whenever there's sin, there has to be atonement. Blood has to be shed. And so he chose to do that so that we could receive God's mercy. And they went down to hell, took the keys of death, conquered death in the grave, came back, even preached to those who have been waiting on him who were in a, in a certain place in hell. That's another, to another topic. But anyway... My name is Daryl Otto II. I'm on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Holla at your boy. And uh, God bless y'all for, for hearing these words. It's a blessing. It's an honor to praise God and preach for God. It is him that gets the glory. And keep your people in pulpit in prayer, man. It's unfortunate, but there are some things that are going on. Definitely a lot of exposure is taking place. And I would say pray for those who are impacted by the unfortunate uh, wrongdoings of those who are supposed to be servants of the Lord. Pray for them. Pray for those impacted and not advocating for wrongdoing. Even those who are in pulpits, keep them in prayer too, but pray that God's will be done in all the situations because without saying too much, there's just a lot going on. Um, so I'm not trying to compromise and tell you to turn a blind eye to any sin, not saying that at all. But I am saying just pray and ask God to be a part of these situations because he needs to be a part of these situations because <sighs> there's wickedness going on. Lord have mercy. Anyway, that's all I'm going to say because far be it for me to speak on things that be not my business, but some things I will speak on as God leads me. Much love. God bless you. And let me just, I don't want to be no politician. I don't want to play middle ground. God loves you. God loves his children. And he loves those who are not his children, but he does not love sin. And we do reap what we sow. And so if wrongdoing is taking place, it does need to be exposed and addressed. And those who were impacted by and hurt by those who were doing wrong, um, they need justice. So let me say that so I don't sound like I'm middle ground on this because I'm not. All right, I'm done. Love you. Peace.